This is not the first Zutara video I have made, and one would be justified in wondering why I'm so interested in resurrecting a ship war that ended back in 2008, when I was only 8 years old. Is it just that I rewatch Avatar at least once every year, and every time I do, I yearn for these two to be together? That's part of it. But a bigger part might be that the central love story of Avatar playing out the way that it does reveals the show's most major blind spot for me. The show has very few flaws, but this is one of them. And that is that it can only fleetingly contradict Aang's perspective. Far more often than not, it sides with him and doesn't acknowledge his flaws like it acknowledges the flaws of other characters, such as Zuko or even Katara. Now, I want to make clear that I do not think the show considers Aang perfect, and it calls him out occasionally, such as in episode 117, the Northern Air Temple, but this happens only infrequently and it does not really affect who he is. The only time he's really held account for his behavior is when he holds himself account for running away, and he gets over that by the end of Season 1. I am fine with the show considering him to be right about certain things, such as sparing the life of the Fire Lord, but other things, such as his senseless determination to clear his name in Episode 205, Avatar Day, or his boundless enthusiasm to go to school in Episode 302, that bizarre footloose parody of an episode, or more seriously, his desire to extricate everyone else from the conflict between him and the Fire Lord in Episode 301, do not have lasting consequences. Sure, in that final case, he ostensibly learns that he can't do this himself, and that he has to rely on others, but that's kind of contradicted because at the very end of the show, he faces down Ozai alone, with no one helping him. It's not like Zuko, when he faces Azula, he has Katara with him, kind of demonstrating that he's grown from being alone to being part of a group. Aang stands alone, and the show supports him in this. Now, Aang is a kid, he makes mistakes, that's fine. I do not want him to be perfect. But while he becomes more mature in certain ways, such as choosing to stand and be the Avatar instead of running away, or choosing to not bow to the opinions of others and instead choosing to remain devoted to his own convictions, he does not grow to really understand the lives and experiences of others. Think of the desert, wherein he leaves them to die in order to look for Appa. Or in Nightmares and Daydreams, wherein he forces everyone else to stop their own preparations for the final battle in order to just take care of him and make sure he does not go insane. They eventually build him this nice, soft, fluffy bed made of koala sheep wool. And this is a very nice and friendly gesture, but why should they constantly have to sacrifice for him when he very rarely does the opposite? And this is especially true in terms of romance. He falls in love with Katara early, so he wants to be with her, and he thinks this will happen even though he has very little evidence to support this outside his own naive beliefs. Again, this is fine. He's young. He has a crush. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to that. I know this video might be coming off as a little anti-Aang, so I want to clarify that I do not hate Aang. I think he is a perfectly fine protagonist who is deserving of respect, especially in regards to his pacifist stance. My problem is that the show creates these fascinating characters like Sokka or Katara and then proves unwilling to look at things from their perspective 
when their perspectives conflict with Aang's. The only exceptions come in certain episodes, such as the Southern Raiders, or anything related to Zuko. We will come back to him later. The show becomes so committed to going with the Aang finally gets into a relationship with the girl of his dreams storyline that they failed to examine things from Katara's perspective. Up until the end, their relationship has very much been about Katara taking care of him when he cannot take care of himself. When Aang can't earthbend, who does he go to? Katara. When Aang flies into a rage because Sandbenders kidnapped Appa, who comforts him and coaxes him out of the Avatar state. Katara. If the relationship between them is that of a younger brother and an older sister, this is fine. But it is shaky ground upon which to build a romantic relationship. And sadly, it seems to extend into their adult lives. Based on the information we have from The Legend of Korra, it seems as though Katara was the one who always had to take care of the glamorless domestic responsibilities, while Aang attained all the praise and fame and regard by serving the world as the Avatar. I cannot say this makes me comfortable. However, I am not against this pairing because it's uncomfortable, or because it's culturally problematic, or because it sends retrograde messages. Not that these are illegitimate reasons, they're just not my particular reasons. I'm against it because it just does not work narratively. Despite what Brian and Mike have said about preferring Katang from the beginning, the actual text is much more ambiguous on that front. There are indeed moments that suggest it is meant to be, such as the end of the Season 1 episode, The Fortune Teller, a widely criticized and quite controversial episode, wherein Aunt Wu gives Katara the prediction that she will marry a powerful bender. And then, by the end of the episode, Sokka calls... Aang a powerful bender, and Katara is left staring at him. However, there are just as many moments that cast a questionable light on their pairing. Especially, confusingly enough, in the third and final season of the show, the one that immediately precedes their getting together. Aang's crush is played for laughs and nightmares and daydreams, and in the Ember Island Players, he kisses her, and she reacts negatively, saying she is very confused. There is real tension here that is never adequately resolved. Which makes it very strange that the series ends on the two of them kissing. Avatar is not even a romantically focused show. Why is this the image you decide to end your decade-defining show on. You might have noticed that throughout this video, I have compiled far more evidence arguing that Katara should not have chosen Aang, or more accurately, that the writers should not have had her choose Aang, than I have gathered evidence supporting the case that Katara should have chosen Zuko. That is not unintentional. I like the Zutara pairing. I want to make that clear. I love how they start out hating each other because they don't understand each other, and I love how Katara gives Zuko a second chance, and they start realizing that they have a lot more in common than they had suspected, and I love that after Zuko joins the group, he is so dedicated to earning Katara's respect and appreciation even though, practically, he does not really have to. I love how they are the two most mature members of Team Avatar, facing their pain directly instead of deflecting it with sarcasm or understatement, as Sokka and Toph do. They understand each other, 
and they make each other better people. That their relationship started out so antagonistically meant that they had to search for what they had in common, and they thus found that they have comparable perspectives on life and grief. I love all this, and I believe it makes them compatible, and they certainly have more in common than Katara and Aang. But that does not necessarily mean that they have to be together. I do not have an innate problem with them just being friends. I do not believe that every two attractive people who understand each other should be in a romantic relationship. However, if Katara has to have a romantic partner by the end of Avatar, even though Avatar has placed relatively little emphasis on romantic relationships, then she should be with Zuko. Because it certainly should not be Aang. One relationship is the case of a kid getting everything he wanted without really having to learn anything, and the other is a relationship between two teenagers who actually understand each other and who have a, an equal bond. I support Zutara completely, but I mostly support it in the case that it saves us from the awkward, bizarre relationship that is Katara and Aang. So anyway, thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can, and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching Avatar. It is a challenging, thrilling, evocative show. And it's the kind of show that demands rewatches. I will never get tired of this show. I criticize it because I've grown to understand it so deeply. I really do love this show. But that also makes me more attuned to whatever faults it has. Don't take this as an indication that I don't really love this show, because I do. Anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.